Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to save and then manage different track heights in the timeline. So basically what that is, is these are the track heights. So you know, you can click this and make it bigger and larger. But a lot of the times you're, you're doing this, you're making one bigger so you can see, you know, the audio track here, then you're making them smaller again, then you're going back and forth. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do that really quickly because you can actually save them as presets and then assign them to your keyboard so that you can switch between them really quickly. So let's just create a couple of them. Let's go back down to default. Let's go really small. We want everything really small. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure they're all the same size here. Then we're gonna go to here. We're gonna hit save preset. We're gonna give it a name. Let's say, I don't know, small tracks. And then we'll assign it to keyboard shortcut track height preset one. And that just is going to give us a jumping point so that when we go and adjust the shortcut to it, we know what we're dealing with. Click okay. And now let's say we want one where the video is just slightly bigger. You know, just enough that you can kind of see the thumbnail here, but all the audio is really large. So you can actually see what's going on with the audio. Maybe we just want to make it so that the only the first track is really, really large so that we can um, manage the main audio track. So we'll do this, and now that's kind of how we like it. So we're going to go in here, we're going to hit save. Whoops. We're going to go in here, we're going to hit save preset, and we're going to make this large audio one, like so. And let's assign that to track preset two. And then let's just make one last one. Let's make them all really large here. So I'm just gonna make these all large. And so this is the last one It's going to be saved as large timeline. And so we're then going to assign that to track preset three. Now, anytime you click on this, your presets are right above here. And I'll show you, uh, yours probably won't have shortcuts right away, so I'll show you how to put those on there. But you can see them, and then in parentheses, they're shortcuts. So let's say we wanted to go back down to small tracks, click that, back down to small tracks, large timeline, we got all the big, uh, they're all really, really big here. And then if we go here and we go to large audio one, see it shrinks everything down and only audio one is large. And now I put this on shift Z, X, and C so I can quickly switch between them on the timeline like so. So let's go and actually adjust these, these keyboard shortcuts. So what we wanna do is we're gonna go to up to edit, then down to keyboard shortcuts, control alt K will also get you there. I believe it's command alt K on a Mac. What's really neat about this is you can just click things. So like, let's say if I hold control, these are all the buttons on control. If I had, if I hold control shift, these are all the buttons on control shift, control shift alt. There's not many buttons on this and you can see the modifiers over here and you can kind of see commands. So what I saw was I went down here and I typed in height. Just all you need is really just H E I J or a G right there, and you'll see that they're all right here. And I assigned these three shortcuts. Why did I assign these? Because if you hold down the shift, let me delete these out of here really quick. So now they don't have any shortcuts. This is what it'll probably look like at the beginning. So if I hold down shift, you'll see that this whole bottom row here is empty. There's nothing we're overriding by doing this. And that is important because a lot of times if you if you overwrite something default, maybe later on you'll wanna use it. And if you look up a tutorial, it'll tell you to use that shortcut, and then the shortcut won't work because you deleted it. So I like to find buttons where I'm not gonna overwrite something. And we have that right here, Z, X, and Y, and you only have to hit shift there. And that's really, really quick on the left hand. And I thought that making them down this row would be really nice. So all we have to do is we gotta click on track preset one, then click over here, make sure the box is highlighted, hit shift Z, oh, make sure it's highlighted, hit shift Z, do the same here, shift X, do the same here, shift C, over here we could do shift V, and now they're all right there. So now when we click okay and we go back to this, you'll notice that they are all right here and you can just, like I was doing before, switch between them. I believe you can make up to, let me see, I think it's, yeah, 10 different presets like this. So you could find different button combinations. Maybe if you wanna make all 10 on like one something common, just control shift alt and then hit a bunch of buttons. There's usually nothing on that, so you can kind of go crazy with that. But that is basically it on this tutorial. It's something that's really, really sort of simple to do, but it can save you a lot of time. I mean, if you reduce the keystrokes of having to go over here and you know zoom this up and zoom this up, you know, it's never a perfect science getting these right. You can save all the stuff that you normally go to and then you know make adjustments. So I could go to, I could hit um, on here. I could go, you know, did the whoops to like that, and then I'm like, oh, I didn't want it that big adjust it. So instead of having to adjust all of them, all I have to do is just adjust one sort of good little uh, good little checkpoints that you can start from and then make some small adjustments to make it how you like. But that is it on this tutorial. Thanks everyone for watching. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comments section below. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make a video every other day about Adobe related content, kind of mainly focusing on Premiere Pro, but I go kind of into some other things. I might go back in InDesign soon. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching and until next time, see ya.